So there I was, living the dream in Portland, Oregon, land of the relentless rain and coffee shops. More crowded than a discount store on Black Friday. I had it all, a cubicle with my very own stapler, a swivel chair that only slightly damaged my spine, and the joy of fluorescent lighting that made me look like I was auditioning for the role of ghost number one in a low-budget horror film. The American dream, right? But something inside me said, is this it? Is this what I worked so hard in college for? Real quick, guys, like and subscribe. I don't want you to miss out. And then like any rational person who spent too much time talking to their plants, I decided to pack up everything into a suitcase, become a digital nomad working as a software engineer, and eventually settle in Manila, Philippines. You're crazy, my friends and family said. Think of the dangers. You could get robbed, or worse. You could end up enjoying life outside the corporate hamster wheel. Well, let's break it down, shall we? Stay in Portland, continue the nine to five, which is really more of an eight to six, let's be honest, grind, retire at 70 with just enough energy and life expectancy left to yell at neighborhood kids to get off my perfectly manicured lawn. Or take the leap, see the world, and settle in a place where the sun actually dares to show its face more than three times a year. And where people use their horns while driving more than they use turn signals. But I digress. Was I crazy? Sure. If by crazy you mean wanting to experience life beyond the glow of a computer screen, seeing sunsets that aren't digitally rendered, and eating food that doesn't come with instructions to pierce the lid and microwave on high for three minutes. The fear was real though. You could die in a third world country, they said, because apparently death respects geopolitical boundaries and would never dare to touch me in the land of the free the home of the brave, and the perpetually overworked. Manila, a city so vibrant, it makes Times Square look like a sleepy village. Here I swap my cubicle for co-working spaces with actual natural light. My microwave meals for food so good it feels like a hug from the inside. And my daily commute for a walk along streets buzzing with energy, color, and life. And sure, there are dangers. Don't get me wrong. Like the danger of becoming so accustomed to year-round sunshine that the idea of returning to endless rain fills me with existential dread. Or the danger of getting so used to the warmth and hospitality of the locals that the idea of small talk at a corporate networking event feels about as appealing as a root canal. And I've had one. So one year later, and the biggest risk wasn't getting robbed or dying, it was realizing that I could have spent my whole life in that cubicle dreaming of someday, while Manila was waiting to turn my some days into today. So to my friends and family who thought I was crazy, you were right. It was crazy. It was crazy wonderful. And anyone sitting in their cubicle listening to this, wondering if there's more to life, just remember the biggest danger isn't failing to live up to others' expectations. It's failing to live up to your own. Quick reminder again, just like and subscribe. Don't want you guys missing out. And I was faced at this moment with a classic crossroads scenario, to stay or not to stay. That was the question. On the one hand, the familiar rain-soaked streets of Portland were the most exotic experience you might have is choosing a new flavor at the local vegan donut shop. On the other hand, the great big unexplored world waiting with open arms and a smorgasbord of experiences that don't involve finding the best Wi-Fi signal for Netflix binges. To those who cautioned me against leaving, worried I'd end up old, gray, and alone, filled with regret in some distant land, I said, better to be old and gray with stories that could fill a book than old and gray with nothing but a collection of unused vacation days. After all, if I had made a colossal mistake, I could always slink back to the States, my tail firmly tucked between my legs, ready to admit defeat. But hey, at least I'd have something new to talk about at parties, right? Remember the time I moved to the Philippines? Who does that? It is a plot twist. I'm still here in BGC, Philippines, one year later, and 
Why, you might ask. Maybe it's the allure of living where hurry is a concept as foreign as a snowstorm in July. Or maybe it's the constant embrace of warm tropical weather, where my biggest worry is whether to wear flip-flops or my other flip-flops. And let's not skirt around the issue of the beautiful, feminine young women. Here, relationships feel like they're from a time capsule, where kindness and warmth are the currencies of love, not the number of likes on your latest Instagram post. What's kept me here anchored in this slice of paradise is a mix of all these things and more. It's the slower paced lifestyle where every day feels like a gentle reminder to breathe, to live, to be present. It's waking up to sunshine that doesn't play hard to get in a country where the weather forecast is perpetually set to perfect. The only real regret nibbling at the edges of my sun-soaked days is that I didn't pack up my life and embark on this adventure sooner. Imagine the extra years I could have spent learning how to properly pronounce hollow hollow or mastering the art of making small talk that goes beyond commenting on the weather because here it's always good. So in the grand mosaic of life, moving to the Philippines has been like weaving in a burst of color I never knew I needed. Sure, I could have stayed in Portland, and I might go back to visit, safely cocooned in that familiar, but then I would have missed out on this, living a life where every day is a page in a story I can't wait to tell people. To those pondering a leap of their own, wondering if they should spread their wings and explore, I say do it. World's too big. Life's absolutely too short. Spend it wondering, what if? And if you do end up with a tale of misadventure, at least it'll be a great story. After all, isn't that what life's all about? Making memories, taking chances, having adventures, and maybe finding your own slice of paradise in the least expected places. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to like and subscribe.